Are these two new controllers about to take the top spot for best entry-level controllers on the market? Well, we're about to find out. Hey, welcome back. Jamie Hartley here from Crossfader, and today we're looking at two brand new controllers from Newmark. Here we have the Newmark Mixtrack Pro FX and the Newmark Mixtrack Platinum FX. These are entry-level controllers that have been designed by Newmark, upgrades to their previous editions of these controllers and big upgrades indeed. In this video, we're going to do two things. The first half, I'm going to break down and review these two products, explain the differences and give you my opinions to help you better make a purchasing decision if you're looking for your first piece of DJ gear or potentially an upgrade to one of these. And in the second half of this video, we're going to deep dive into all the features of the controllers um, and you'll learn what all of the buttons do basically. So if you want to jump straight into what all the features are, then just go to this timestamp now. If not, and you want to hear about my thoughts about these two controllers, then let's get stuck in. As always, remember to like, comment, share, subscribe on these videos to help us keep making more. And let's look at the essential new features on these two controllers. On the top, we have the Mixtrack Pro effects, and at the bottom, the Mixtrack Platinum effects. As you can see, both controllers are basically the same shell of each other and feature a lot of the same buttons and pads and knobs. However, there are a few small differences, which I'm going to explain shortly. First of all, the Mixtrack Pro effects is the cheaper of the two at $199 as of making this video, and the bottom one, the Platinum effects, is $249 as of making this video. That pretty much $50 difference comes in with two things. The Mixtrack Pro FX is a two channel, two deck controller, whereas the Mixtrack Platinum FX has access to up to four decks. This means you can layer channels three and four over the top of one and two and basically mix up to four different tracks at the same time. There is another visual difference that you can tell straight away. The Mixtrack Platinum, Platinum FX has the onboard center displays on the jog wheels, whereas the Pro FX doesn't. These center displays show things like your BPM information, the, how far into the track you are by the time, the key information, and just some really useful things that beginner DJs are going to need to be aware of when mixing. So that's a really nice feature. These jog wheels are both six inch capacitive touch jog wheels. They feel the same no matter which one you go for. So they are the main differences really between these two controllers. Four decks can be mixed on this one, two on that one. You have center displays to view key information and you don't have center displays. Saying that, these jog wheels on the Mixtrack Pro FX do have this line printed on. What is this line for? Well, a lot of scratch DJs will need to have a marker on their jog wheels to know where their scratch sound is. So this has been added on, just like on something like the Rain 12s, which are scratch controllers. This has been added on so anyone learning to scratch can find where their scratch sound is and set their marker really easily. This is a really nice visual reference. So right off the bat, if you are looking to be a scratch DJ down the line, I would actually recommend this controller over this controller. Scratch DJs don't need to mix four channels, but they do want some nice visual markers to see where their scratch sounds are. If you're a DJ that's not going to be scratching and focusing on mixing, then I would recommend this controller because you have that key information to help you mix seamlessly between songs. Each controller is designed to work with Serato DJ Lite out of the box. It is a free software with a paid upgrade to Serato DJ Pro if you choose. As of making this video, they're the softwares that are supported, but I can imagine in the future that Virtual DJ and Algorithm DJ will also support these controllers. The essential things that all DJs starting out need are responsive jog wheels, which these both have. The six inch jog wheels are probably the best on the market and I'm going to explain why later on in the video. The tempo adjusts are full size, which means you have full control, really nice precise control over your tempo adjust, something else that is really essential for a DJ starting out that a lot of other entry level controllers don't have. They're a lot smaller on other ones. Also, the buttons and pads that you will need, such as the Q and play buttons are nice and tactile. The performance pads are really responsive. I'm going to explain why these are so good later in the video too. As a beginner DJ, you might want to play around with effects. And both of these controllers now have these new onboard access to effects in the Serato DJ Lite and Pro software, where you can just toggle between 
different effects and then they have this paddle action for turning the effect on and keeping it on or holding it down for a temporary on and off switch. These are found on a lot of scratch mixers. They're standard now for scratch DJs to be able to flick an effect on or just to activate an effect quickly and they are really tactile. I love this way of displaying and using the effects. Each controller has high quality 24-bit audio via an RCA output on the back. We have a quarter and eighth inch jack um, for headphones on the front and you've even got a microphone input on the back as well with microphone controls. Each controller also has your four different performance pads in Serato DJ Lite and more in Serato DJ Pro. Something new on these controllers is fader cuts which can automate cutting sounds like this with an up fader or a cross fader if you want to practice some scratches and see how that sounds. I'll show you this later in the video. Both controllers have dedicated loop controls down at the bottom which are really intuitive for beginner DJs. And lastly, as standard on all entry level controllers are three band EQs, level controls, fader controls and a cross fader. We're going to dive deep into all of these features in the second half of this video. So if you want to find out what all of these buttons, knobs, faders and things do, then keep watching. Before I deep dive into all of the features on these controllers, I just want to explain to you why I think these are possibly the best entry level controllers on the market now. First thing you need to understand is that Newmark as a brand is owned by a bigger umbrella called In Music. That same company owns Den and DJ, Rain and Akai amongst lots of other music brands. This means they can spread the manufacturing between their brands, they can spread the cost between their brands. And more than anything, what I've seen on these controllers for the first time is these controllers have inherited parts from different brands such as Den and DJ. So these jog wheels are actually the same, or to me they feel exactly the same as the jog wheels on the Den and DJ Prime 2. That's a unit that's worth over $1,000 on this entry level controller. Now that is something that hasn't been seen before. These are high quality jog wheels on something that is at the beginning, the entry level point in the market. For that, I think these controllers actually should probably be worth more money because of the way they feel. They are definitely the best jog wheels I have felt on the market and jog wheels are one of the most important things to have as a beginner DJ and something that you're going to be using over and over again, especially if you're looking to become a scratch DJ, which leads me on to things like the paddle effects. To take those paddles off the Numark Scratch Mixer, again, a more premium product, and put them in an entry-level product is amazing. They feel great, they're really intuitive to use, and if you're looking to be a scratch DJ in the future, then this is the best place to start, for sure, because on those scratch setups that all mixers have those paddle effects, even on the Numark Mixtrack Pro FX with the marker that I mentioned to find your scratch point, that's something that's featured on something like the Rain 12 uh, turntable controller. It's a really useful tool to have there on an entry level product. So for those reasons, these products are bumping up there as probably my favorite entry level controllers on the market now. The performance pads are the last thing I just want to mention. The performance pads are really tactile. They don't have the dreaded click that a lot of entry level controllers do where when you push it down you get this little click. Performance pads you want to be able to perform on them and bat away on them doing finger drumming and all sorts of intuitive things when it comes to DJing and you want them to be responsive. These pads are taken from Akai controllers, they're found on things like the Denon SC5000 Prime players and even the Denon DJ Prime 2. So again, you're getting more premium quality in something that is entry level because of the spread of manufacturing across these different brands. So for that reason, all of those features are really what make these controllers stand out for me personally and make it a really valuable purchasing decision for this entry level in the market. If you're ready to deep dive tutorial on these controllers and learn what all of the buttons, knobs and faders do, then stick around. We're about to go into that right now. We're first going to deep dive into the Mixtrack Pro FX 
Pretty much everything that I explain on this controller is featured on the Mixtrack Platinum effects as well. And I will showcase those extra things after on the Mixtrack Platinum. First of all, the Mixtrack Pro FX, it comes with the Serato DJ Lite software for free. All of the buttons and pads access different features on that software. And if you pay to upgrade to the Serato DJ Pro software, you'll be able to access things like being able to record your effects, more performance features, and a few other things within that software. But to get started as a beginner, this is all you're going to need. Serato DJ Lite is a great software for getting started because you can use streaming services now in there such as SoundCloud, Go and Tidal. So you can sign up to those and access a world of music or you can just use your own music from your computer as well. The controller features nice tactile cue and play buttons. A cue point is set at the start of the song. You can hold the cue button to temporarily play the song or you can press the play button to start. There are sync features for syncing both decks to each other. We can turn them off by holding shift and pressing sync again. Each controller has these nice six inch capacitive jog wheels. That means that when you touch the top, you can scroll the track forwards and backwards and they're really responsive. I mentioned earlier on in this review that this controller, the Pro FX, has a marker printed onto it. When you're learning to scratch, this is great because you can set up a cue point on your marker and it will always stay at that position until you let go of the track. These markers are featured on rotating uh, controllers such as the Rain 12, something that if you went down the Scratch DJ route, you would then get familiar with and it, it enhances your Scratch performance, but it's something introduced here at the entry level and something that's quite nice I like to see on this controller. We also have full throat pitch or tempo faders, which means you've got really nice control over your tempo adjust, something that a lot of entry level controllers don't feature. So that is, I really like seeing that on this controller and there's some nice tension there as well for fine tuning your BPM control and beat matching. Moving over to the center, we have a three band EQ with bass, mid and treble or also known as high. We've got level or trim controls, which control the overall level of that channel, as well as our up faders, which control the overall level. Here you can hear the three band EQ. These are total kill EQs. And we have the cross fader here, which is very light. It is good for scratching. If maybe it just feels a little bit flimsy, um, but it works well for scratching. So as far as entry level controllers go, it's a great crossfader. We also have nice big filter pots. So these sound great and you get a nice filter sweep. And it's nice that these are bigger than the EQs. They stand out and it means you've got nice control over them as well. These are common things used by DJs when it comes to mixing. In the center of the mixer, we can access up to six different inbuilt Serato effects right here on the hardware. So over on the software, if we click on the effects tab here, we can see the different effects. Now you don't really need to touch the software now because we can do it all on the hardware. You can choose an effect by just tapping one of the buttons. And then for example, if I leave it on echo, I can change how much I want the echo to be applied by this dry and wet knob here. I can change the beat fraction. So that's how often I want the echo to be applied. Let's say half a beat. And then it's as simple as we can flick the paddle up and it will hold in position and leave the effect on. The button flashes when it's active and these work post fader, such as the echo and reverb, they both work post fader. You can change the beat fraction while it's on. Make it louder or quieter and flick it back off again. If you want to have it on temporarily, you can just hold it down. And when you let go, it'll flick back to the center and deactivate. You can see this is responding on the software as well and turning it on and off on the software. Let me just show you all of the effects. We have reverb, phaser, flanger, low pass filter, and high pass filter. The effects can be manually tapped in as well. If the BPM is wrong, you can tap in how often you think the track is playing and it will apply the effect at that speed that you've tapped into. This is really nice. 
I love seeing these paddle effects on such an entry level controller. I think if you are ever gonna become a scratch DJ, then this is definitely one of the controllers for you because you're going to be using paddle effects like this no matter what scratch equipment you upgrade to. It's pretty much industry standard now on scratch battle mixers. In the center here, we also have our headphone cue control to activate the headphones via either a quarter in inch or eighth inch jack. You can mix between the master and the cue here and you can turn the level of your headphones up here. This is to preview your tracks and get them beat matched in your headphones prior to mixing. You can select different songs by scrolling up and down with this browse knob here and then loading onto decks one or two. There are also an instant doubles feature if you know what that is. If you want to do things like beat juggling you can quickly instant double a song so it's playing on both sides at the same time. We have a master control for the master level up on the top right and a mic control for the microphone level on the top left. Moving to the performance pads and the performance features on these controllers, there are four different performance pads available. We have Q mode, which when the track is playing, you can jump to different sections of the song. You can set up new, set, new pads. You can delete them by holding shift and deleting that pad. No matter what mode you're in, when in Serata DJ Lite, the bottom four pads will act as these icons here. So the first one is stutter, which means it will jump back to the start of the track and start playing. If the track is queued up, it will automatically start the track, just like the play button. This next pad goes back to the start as well. However, if you accidentally pause and set a new cue point accidentally, press this button once and you can go back to the start of the song. Then we have standard fast forward, and rewind. The next performance pad mode is auto loop. When the track's playing, you can set either a one beat, two beat, four beat, or eight beat loop. Tap the pad again to deactivate. Fader cuts is something quite new for this controller. It tries to replicate cuts like this with a cross fader or an up fader on the track itself. So if you have a listen, I hold the pad down and it performs this. Now, it just sounds not great on a track playing, but if I were to get a scratch sample loaded up and I were to push the scratch sample forwards and backwards, it cuts the sound up. This is a cool way of introducing scratching and hearing what scratch sounds sound like. There is obviously a rival controller that has another similar scratch mode built into the Serato software. This is just approaching it in a slightly different way. You still have to move the jog wheel, but apply the cuts with the pads instead of using a crossfader. Obviously, this is just a way of learning and getting familiar with scratch sounds. I would always recommend then learning how to actually scratch using a crossfader as well. But that's your fader cuts mode. And there are four more available if you upgrade to Serato DJ Pro. Obviously, these bottom four pads still act the same in Serato DJ Lite, as just mentioned. And then lastly, we have the sampler mode. If I just open up the sample bank here, we've got some samples that come with Serato DJ Lite. Explosion, glass breaking, horn, and laser. These samples are obviously great for putting in between your transitions. They're used a lot with hip hop mixing, just for filling the gaps in between your cuts. Um, and it's really nice to have that access there on the controller. Lastly, we have dedicated loop controls down here. This is a really simple to use. You can half or two times the loop and you'll see this shown up on the screen one beat, two beats, four beats, or eight beats, and then you can just activate the loop on and off as you please with the button above. Anything that's highlighted red on the controller is a secondary function. So if I hold shift and press loop now, it will re-loop that section. Or if I press shift and the half times button, it will set an in point, press play, and I can set an out point as well. As we're talking about secondary functions, we also have pitch range and key lock underneath the pitch bend buttons. 
This allows you to change the range of the tempo adjust to a much larger range. So if I just get my other track loaded back on. At the moment, we can speed the track up by 8% faster, as shown here, and 8% slower. Now, if I hold shift and press pitch range, I can do it 16% faster or 16% slower. Press it again, 50% faster and 50% slower. This is great for making really wide transitions to move between genres. Lastly, we have shift and the plus on the pitch bend, which will do a key lock. This locks the key of the track or unlocks the key of the track. So if I slow it down, the pitch of the track gets lower. If I put key lock on, it keeps it in the same key, but speeds the track up or slows it down. If you want to turn scratch mode off, where you touch the top of the jog wheel and it stops and allows you to scratch, you can just toggle this button here. Now the top of the jog wheel acts as a nudge, just like the edge of the jog wheel. This is great for getting your tracks in time and for beat matching. Underneath the scratch mode is, it says bleep, but it's a sensor button. So if I hold shift and press scratch, it reverses the track and then jumps back to where it would be if you hadn't have done it at all. It's basically to eliminate any swear words. If you are playing tracks that have swear words in, but you don't want the audience to hear them, then you've got to get your timing right and you can censor them out. Now I'm going to show you the mix track platinum effects and just the key differences. There are only a couple, so let's make this quick. First of all, you can tell that we've got the center displays on the jog wheel. This shows key information like the BPM of a song, so you can easily match the BPMs between both tracks. It shows you the time elapsed underneath. It shows you what percent you've sped the track up or slowed it down and what pitch range you're on when I spoke about the pitch range here. You can see the track playing, the playhead moving around. Now, if you are a Scratch DJ, this isn't as tight as just having it printed on the top, like on the Mix Track Pro effects. So that's why I would probably sway towards a cheaper controller if you're really wanting to be a Scratch DJ down the line, but it still works really well. You can see how far into the track you are as well by this white marker. If I jump in, you can see the white marker is now about a quarter of the way through. That's really useful to visualize just how long's left in your song and how long you've got left to mix. So those center displays really welcomed and one of the main upgrades compared to the mix track pro FX. The other thing is you can access up to four channels or should I say four decks because we only have two channels here. But by pressing this button here, we can access decks three and decks four as you can see on the screen. Um, and what this does is it layers the other deck on top of that channel. So, for example, if I were to just get another song lined up and press deck select and then load another song in, I can control this deck with all the same features, but it works independently. So if I move the tempo just now, it's only affecting deck three. Toggle back, I'm on deck one. If I'm playing deck one, I could sync it up and then I could mix. As you can see, the controls only control deck three. I could set a cue point, scrub back, and it works independently. All the EQs work independently as well, but the only thing is, I would say if you are looking to mix up to four decks at the same time, this really is an introduction to it. You can't do anything complex because you only have the two channels to control the sound and the EQs. So you really want to be looking at a four channel controller and spending quite a bit more money if that is something you want to do in the future. It's a nice thing to have available, but I'm always a bit hesitant to use up to four decks because you can easily get lost, especially as a beginner DJ, what channels you've got playing, what channels you need to mix in and out with these just two layers available. But that is the other feature that's available for those $50 extra on the Mixtrack Platinum FX. Lastly, if you decide to pay for the upgrade to Serato DJ Pro, you get access to a few more performance features within the software. The main big thing is being able to record your sets. We have the record tab here, but you can also get expansion packs such as things like Serato Flip, which you can access by holding shift and pressing Q, and this will access your flipped where you can juggle a track around with the hot cues, and it will automate that 
and play it back. You can also access pitch play if you have that expansion as well, which is shift and sample, which then allows you to pitch the track up and down from a certain cue point. But again, these are expansions that you may have to pay for within Serato DJ Pro to upgrade to. The one downside that I would say is with Serato DJ Pro, you can save loops in the software. I would like to have seen Shift Auto Loop access these saved loops, but they don't. Shift Fader Cuts and Shift Auto Loop don't seem to activate anything without doing some MIDI mapping yourself. So it's just one little thing that I would say is I would have liked to have seen save loops available with Shift and Auto Loop. But with Auto Loop, we now have I Beat Jump activated along the bottom, which we can see in the software, and I can beat jump through the song and choose the different parameter length and beat jump. That's in auto loop mode. In cue mode, we have up to eight hot cues, so you can set all eight hot cues. The bottom four pads do not work the same now as they did in Serato DJ Lite. As mentioned, there are a few different fader cuts too. I'll just quickly show you them so you can hear what they sound like with those scratch samples. So you can get creative with those two. And there you have it, the two new controllers from Newmark, the Mixed Track Pro Effects and Platinum Effects. Which one would I buy? Well, for the sake of $50 extra, I do like the onboard displays on the uh, Platinum Effects, and I would pay that extra $50 for those displays. But if you are on a really tight budget, then this does everything feature-wise pretty much as this one, apart from those four channels. But again, I wouldn't encourage mixing four decks on something such as an entry level controller like this. You want to be looking at spending more money and having full control over four channels with the levels, with the EQs, and things like that. So it's up to you really. I think if you can afford it, spend the extra $50. If you're on a tight budget, go for the Pro FX. Regardless of which one you go for, I now think that these two stand to be probably the best entry level controllers on the market. Reason being is that build quality is amazing for this price point. I would dare say that they could charge a bit more for the quality of these controllers, especially those jog wheels. They feel amazing and it's only when you get on them that you feel how tactile and responsive things like the paddle effects and the jog wheels really are. The performance pads feel great as well and all of those things combined make these my probably best buys at the moment, which is a big thing to say. Now obviously this is at the time of recording this. I will be doing separate videos on comparisons between these and the SP3 and the DDJ400 because I know you're all going to want to know which what the differences are between them and which one you should buy. I'd love to know in the comments what you think about these controllers, if you think Newmark are heading in the right direction and if you think it could be a good year for in music, especially that they're sharing manufacturing processes that I mentioned in this video between their different brands. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to give it a thumbs up, like, comment, share, do all that good stuff to help us keep making more videos like this. And I'll see you in another video very soon.